Hi, I'm Fox. I'm Couch K. You're watching the Two Smart Guys Show, where every week we bring you the latest technology, news, mods, hacks, and just general information about certain technologies. <laughs> oh, and best to use some practices. One of the things that I do for a living is I, I run a little internet service provider that does wireless internet. I'm really looking into growing it and getting more into fiber optics. And it caught my attention that their Google Fibers is like being announced in more cities, like really fast. I think two more. I think two more cities were announced. Yeah, two two cities this month. They went from doing one city every you know three years. <laughs> to I think there was only one city. I think it was only Kansas City. Yeah, I think there was, it was. All there was was Kansas City for like two years, and then all of a sudden they're like Austin, Texas, and then like later in the month they announced Provo, Utah. Which made me excited because I don't live anywhere near that, but I want to live. I could get live closer than that if I wanted to. You, and if, and they, it, I, have, I think in uh, Kansas City they're going to be expanding out into the neighboring areas. Yeah, and so, they are breaking it out. So, so which brought the topic of there are so many different flavors of internet, yeah. and there are ways you can get it. Um, we were trying to figure out all the different ways you can get internet. So we have fiber, which is our Google fiber yeah, so and other companies who provide fiber. So I guess we're going to go from the best to the worst. <laughs> well, we'll just go down the list. We'll talk about it. Okay. So, so, so after we make the list, so we have fiber and then we have what is considered a cable system, which is usually your cable TV provider yeah. is sending you something like that. There is uh, DSL, which is your telephone company. There is wireless, which is more like what you are. And mostly you'll find this in more rural areas. Yeah. And then there's satellite. And then at the very bottom there's, well, I guess dial-up still does well, exist. Well, there's dial-up and like somewhere in between wireless and satellite is cellular wireless. There's fixed, okay. there's well, fixed wireless include. and not so fixed wireless. But we'll get into I guess that I later. consider... I guess I get into stuff. I forget about cellular because it's so used to the phone system. Yeah, yeah. So there's like, what is that, six or seven different ways that you can get internet? Yeah. Um, and each one of them has advantages and disadvantages. And depending on your economic situation and where you live and a whole bunch of factors that play into it, including service provider availability, um, you need to know your ways around it. Yeah, so um, I so. think that the highest penetration right now is probably either cable or DSL. I think it depends on what area you go into, but yeah, I think you're right. I think, um, like for instance, um, I think the campaign to have a twenty dollar a month bill from DSL for the next twenty years or whatever they decided it was going to be is uh, a pretty significant play on their part Indeed. because anyone who's had Internet through cable knows that it goes up every year. There's nothing you can do about it. It seems like they constantly are raising the price. Okay, so we'll start out with land lines. So you've got this co this copper cable. It's got two pairs. Is it two or two? Uh, pairs? It's two lines technically. Yeah, so it's two, two A two and B is. is some, some there's two pairs that usually go to your house, but only one of them is active. Pots, plain old telephone service, and there, some yeah. of these cables in the ground are literally like half a century old, or, or more, or more, and. Uh, they they're trying like crazy to get high speeds through them. <laughs> so DSL is one. Hey, of those. I don't even know what the high, fastest you can get through. Um, you know, like we're talking modems. were like, it, was it fifty six k? Yeah, fifty six k. One twenty eight. They topped out at, but they never saw that. It was it no. was. I think the best they ever really were th were thirty three six when they were actually communicating at that speed, and then they did some weird software compression to get fifty six k, and it never. It never quite worked out, but yeah. no one really has to worry about that unless you are a super rural area and you have Ma Bell somewhere around. Yeah, and, and the chances uh -huh. are, like, if you're where I'm at and you have that kind of a problem where you can only get dial-up, your, um, your telephone line's so bad <laughs> that you can't even get good dial-up. You'll probably get 14.4 yeah. or less, which is, like, email, which, text type of internet. <laughs> which usually your next best option is cellular if you have a cell phone signal where you live. Right, so... You, because... Uh, be it expensive, it's usually one megabit per second or around that area, which is about four times faster. Yeah, yeah, you can usually get around one megabit on 3G service. Uh, Edge is like 256K, which is still better than dial-up. But if you're in a rural area that you're only getting dial-up, you're not getting anything better than Edge usually. 
And then you've got your your LTE, which can go theoretically up to thirty. But to you won't have gigabit. that. <laughs> you um, won't have LTE if you're having a problem getting internet through <laughs> any other means. Well, because hey, LTE is a city only kind of thing. Well, but you we, can we use LTE if you're paying here, for, which is weird. If you're paying for a cell phone that has the ability to um, bridge a connection and tether it, um, sometimes that's the best option you have, and yeah. you just use it. The, the, one so, of the bigger disadvantages of using a cellular connection is data caps. They put very low yeah. data caps on So them. if you don't have a data cap, then you're fine. If you do, you're screwed. No Netflix. Yeah. And, uh, so up from they, that... they And they have... Um, so you can get it either tethered through your phone, you can get it through a... A MiFi hotspot, which is basically just a yeah. phone without voice, or you yeah, can tell. get what they now have is these home fusion things, which are basically a fixed unit on the outside of your house with a little bit bigger data cap. They give you ten gigs instead of two. It, yeah, but it's, it's all it's still basically the same thing as yeah, pumping your cell phone, it, it but it just depends thing. on how you do it. Yeah. So yeah. from there you go to satellite service which is usually the option that if you don't have dial-up service that works and you definitely don't have a cell phone signal, your only option is, you know, the, um, the satellite system, yeah. which is odd because what it does is it actually uses the downlink from the satellite, but the uplink has to run through your phone no, system. No, not anymore. Is that how it worked? Nope. No, they, they got the upload going through the satellites now. Oh, good. So, okay, so they have changed that. Yeah, That's at and least. They, they've got... It depends on what part of the country you're in. Uh, if you're on the, the new v, v, VSAT 1 or 3 or whatever the new, newest VSAT is, it can do up to 10 down and I think 3 up. But it's still but got like a 10 gig cap nose. on it. So it's got but you a, still pay through the nose for yeah, it. Yeah, you got, you got a really low cap. So you, you can't, if you want to watch movies or stream things or actually download stuff, it's really not for you. <laughs> no, it's meant for. It's basically meant for someone who is no other option. living way back in the boonies and wants to have the ability to read their email, keep up with news and current events, and maybe watch a YouTube video every now and then. And uh, out here, we don't have that. We have the older system, which is about a megabit, and it's about fifty-six k up, and the latency is around two seconds. Yeah. So, so there's no online gaming. No. So far, <laughs> nothing we've talked about can do online gaming. Well, so some people, so, some people really try the hard on LTE, their cellular system. LTE is getting there. It's, yeah, it's, but it can a couple hundred milliseconds. It's not too bad. It's it's gotten yeah. way better. Um, but yeah, two, over a thousand milliseconds on some of these satellite systems is just impossible. Uh, yeah, and they're weird too because like when they hit your cap, they'll throttle you down to dial-up speed, which is weird. They don't shut you off. They just throttle you down to dial-up. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, so, so next is probably what, DSL? Oh, no, yeah, Wi-Fi. Uh, well, DSL no, and Wi-Fi are kind of... We didn't do DSL. We should have done DSL. Um, well, DSL, I think, comes before or it comes after satellite because satellite is pretty expensive yeah. so most DSL, often. And it's DSL is great if you live near um, the main... Lines. Yeah, the main lines. The, Could, the DSL gets so better... Yeah, DSL gets better with the with better lines. Yeah, the, so the newer your lines are, the newer your development is, and the newer the line back to the home office, and the, the better you your are speeds to are. The, 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 the main repeater station that, that's out. Yeah. Because the further you get out, the slower it is. So when they say you get speeds up to 10 megabits or speeds up to 40 megabits, it depends on how close you are to their... Yeah. It's interesting because to me, self or uh, DSL reminds me of like the high school kids I knew when they used to build stereos. How one line got spread out fourteen times to all the different you know speakers, and and they couldn't figure out why they didn't have power to drive things. It's because they were taking that one line and they were spreading it out fifteen times, and they just didn't have the you know the oomph like this, behind the you know. this area that I'm currently putting internet in. We're replacing a lot of DSL connections that are supposed to be a megabit. And they're getting closer to 256. Yeah. Because the phone lines are literally 100 years old. So. There's no and there's no incentive to change that. And that's, yeah. in some ways, that's one of the things that um, some of the newer players like Google Fiber are trying to change. Because there's no incentive to change the pathways that this data connection works. And they just keep, they just keep them. So you're literally, by inaction, inhibiting the growth of the economic status, the education, all this stuff of the people in that area. And the thing about so. DSL is they offer these really cool like plans that are $10 a month, $20 a month, but the catch is you have to have a phone service through them. 
and the land yeah. lines are usually insanely expensive, especially in rural 60, areas. 80 bucks a month. Yeah. So, like, yeah, sure, your internet's only 20 bucks, but you're paying another 40 for your phone and another 20 for long distance. Not to mention the taxes and fees that are yeah, for the company. It's like, yeah. like, we've been replacing these DSL lines, and um, because they're in a, they have these special fees for people that live remote, and they're paying like $80 just for the phone. Yeah. And then we just put a uh, voice over IP on the fixed wireless, and it, they're paying half as much for like 10 times faster internet. So it's, and the phone probably works just about as much as time. The phone, know? the phone works way better on the on the fixed yeah. wireless. It sounds better. Most of these old phone lines, it sounds like you're talking through a tin can. <laughs> yeah. And they and they do go out with the weather when there's um, water, moisture, and water and stuff. Uh, anyways, so um, I'd put fixed wireless somewhere right. in the range of DSL. Like, yeah. And the reason why fixed wireless is it depends on who your provider is because some providers are throttling back their system to conserve um, their total bandwidth because depending on what their bandwidth to them, they want to spread it out and have make sure everybody gets something evenly or they want to run older, smaller gear. Uh, or you know, like Pox oh, was running into early on, <laughs> they want to run gear that's maybe a uh, different megahertz. Like if you want to run 900 megahertz or something like that, so you can run through trees, you can't go as fast. Yeah, yeah. So like uh, like the way we're doing it is we're, we're, we're selling by the megabit. You can get like a 3, 5, or 10. Um, the other option that people do is they'll just say, yeah, you can go at the full speed of the system, whatever it can go at. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll cap you at 10 megs or 10 gigs or whatever. Yeah. So we're going with the unlimited, you know, speed can, type of plan, which I prefer personally, and that's why we're going with it because nobody wants overages. But yeah, well, it's it's a it's a nightmare for you know your accounting system too to deal with overages. So with your wireless, if you're going to go with a wireless carrier, more often than not that you're you're choosing between your DSL, your cable, and your wireless carrier. Um, you, now, I'm talking about cellular wireless, I'm talking about putting an antenna on your roof and talking back to a home yeah, system. So fixed, fixed wireless is different where you've actually got a directional thing pointing at a tower and it's, it's got a sector that, it, it's got some, uh, a lot of advantages for speed over um, cellular. Because cellular is assuming people are just be running around all over the place. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> and they should be able to tell you almost to the megabit how fast you could go because yeah. they are actually restricting that pipeline yeah unlike dsl which is like oh you're subject to whatever your conditions are um and unlike cable which is oh well you're subject to the, the hose effect um the wireless is supposed to be almost a direct connection with a little bit of the hose effect involved well, in it but they cap there's, you there's, at a certain there point there still is a hose effect you're, you're um there's a sector a little bit there's a sector that you're connected to and you share with the people in that sector so yeah. I mean, it's, it's but kind it's of, not it's quite same, as severe as the the same thing happens with cable and the same thing happens with DSL. Yeah. But so it's just it's they're they're all they're all very similar. For all of you who don't ha don't quite understand what the hose effect is, imagine you have a monster hose like a fire hose, and that's your internet connection. It's pumping water through there, and then a hundred people hook up their garden hoses to it. If everybody turns on their garden hose, everybody's running this when their house. When you turn the other water on the house, the pressure in one room goes down. The same thing works for the internet in that sense. That, you know, you've only got so much pipeline, if everybody's tapping off at the same time, everybody's, you know, speed or amount goes down. Yeah, so what we're talking about here is these are all last mile. And then I guess the last last mile thing we're going to talk about is cable TV, which yeah. it's currently probably one of the better solutions. The catch is you have to have live where there's cable <laughs> yeah well you have to live where there's cable and it, it does depend on your system because depending on where you live at your cable provider can be very stingy or very generous and then uh -huh. there's, there's issues with you know working with a humongous telco and getting service i mean like uh when i have problems with mine it's i mean it goes out for hours a time of the day and I, I can't do anything about it i call them and they're like well you know it'll it'll clear up it'll start working there's like no service i mean yeah, they're fixing it <laughs> it's like so, I mean, even though it is up to 30 megs, I'd rather go with a, you know, a, a 10 or 15 meg connection that always works it's as consistent. opposed to a, an iffy 30 meg. So, yeah. I don't know. It's, it depends on your, like, I think it really depends on your carrier because, like, where you're at, the cable system is probably 60 years old or 50, 60 years old in terms of some of the infrastructure they're using. And there's no guarantee that all that stuff, even though it was maybe built in the 80s you're using radio towers from you know the 50s and 60s to move stuff around the yeah. you know the state so 
Um, oh, and then fiber, I guess, was... Now they're, now, they're, now they're starting to do fiber to the home, which is like your, your, your best option, I guess, if you could get it or afford it or have a big, huge monster company that would be willing to fund it for you, <laughs> like yeah. Google. Well, if, you're, if you are a Google <laughs> and you can fund, you know, these monster projects. Um, Say hi, Lola. Say hi. <laughs> Hello. She's not sleeping very well. Uh, uh -huh. Ian went back to bed and left the door open, and then went to sleep. Oh. So they're both sacked out, and she's all... Yeah. What's up, guys? Anyway, so more often than not, unless you're within a Google zone, you're not going to be having fiber. There are other fiber carriers out there, and some of them honestly treat you a lot like um, cable network does. Yeah, so, the, the, so. like uh, Fios, I think. Um, anyways, the reason why I'm interested is we were talking about the hose effect. We're trying to increase that back, the big main fire hose. So we're putting fiber to all the towers. Yeah. Power locations, and ultimately, I want to I, I want to be able to get to the point where we could run fiber to people's houses. So yeah, well, and that's that's what a lot of people want to do. And what happens is you actually don't get a fiber connection; you get uh, a fiber connection to the the pole, and then the pole goes to the you know breaks off the houses. So you don't don't think that you're going to have this fiber connection into your house at at that point. But it's it, what it is is just fiber close enough to your house that the last mile or the last hundred feet are talking about. Um, now these you are, have a bigger pipe to getting to you. Yeah, they're, I mean, well, they're putting fiber all the way to the house, and then from your router it goes um, otherwise. <laughs> you can see yourself. But, uh, so. yeah, so yeah, fiber is, like, is great. It's just uh, the cost of fiber to the house, depending on, you know, where a bazillion different factors is anywhere from... Five grand to twenty grand a house. <laughs> yeah, it can be very expensive, and that's um, one reason why you don't see it going. It's yeah. usually to businesses and the major, you yeah, know, things it's like that. Very, very expensive. But as, as more people do it, and then as it gets further out the road, costs come down. And <laughs> hopefully, that will be the future, uh, or better, you know, wireless technologies or cable technologies. <laughs> Anyway, this is a little uh, one-on-one. Some people had some questions about Wi-Fi, you know, when they started announcing the fiber in my area for um, bringing the uh, Google Fiber, and they're like, so what's the big deal? And so it's one more Internet provider, and like, no, seriously, this is a big deal. So, yeah, so you know, fiber is touting one gigabit per second. So I think that, you know, we're running a little long on our show, but the point is um, it's good to know what you're dealing with when you're making a selection, and if you've made the wrong choice, what you need to look for when you get the next one. Yeah, I'd say the best rule of thumb is talk to people that already have service and, and see how it's working for them on the different services in your area because it really varies from ISP to ISP on what kind of service you're going to get, regardless of the technology. Yeah, and even the same kind of technology from two different ISPs, if you had two different wireless providers or two different cellular providers, um, they definitely treat you differently. Yeah. So, Anyways, thanks for joining us for the super long show. Um, Please post in the comments below on any of the technologies you want to hear more about. I know well, quite a bit about the wireless because I've been working with that. I'm I'm learning about the fiber, um, and I want I'm personally wanting to learn more about that. So if you've got information for me, let me know. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm at Walking Crow on Twitter, and I'm at Tommy Five C. And uh, we do shows every week here at TwoSmartGuys.com, and a live show every Wednesday night at 8:30 Mountain Time at TwoSmartGuys.com/live. See you guys. See ya. This has been Two Smart Guys Production.